안녕하세요. <笑>あの普通最初には日本語で発表したいかなと考えてますけど、いろいろ人は相談したら英語でやってほしいの人が多かったですけど、申し訳ない英語で発表します。So, my name is Eric Charles Hawkinson. I'm originally from Arizona in the States, but I've been living in Japan for the last 10 years. I've been teaching at a very small school. In the northern part of Kyoto Prefecture called Seibu University. It's in a town called Fukuchiyama. And I teach a variety of subjects there, mostly related to language, English,、uh, new media, and international studies. And today,、uh, also, like the presenters, a couple of them before me, I am not necessarily a, a tourism studies professional. My research background is in.、Uh, Educational technology, so designing e learning courses and uh, making uh, learning applications for smartphones and tablet devices and things like that. So, what I'm g o n n a my agenda and my goal today is、uh, not necessarily to show you some new research that I'm doing, but to, to use some of the research that I've done in educational technology and have that inform me to show you some of the tools that、uh, you can use in tourism. To promote and、uh, improve informal learning environments for a better understanding of areas and、uh, the, the visiting culture and identity and area, geography, anything that you might want to use. And today that is augmented reality. Has anyone heard of augmented reality here? She. <laughs> oh, there's a few people, okay. So,、uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about my personal background, just very briefly, and then my past research in something that's closest to、uh, tourism, which is called EWAM. And then I'll go into augmented reality. I've been working with augmented reality for educational technology, and I'm going to talk about the possible uses in tourism and tourism development. And then I started brainstorming a possible idea to use augmented reality to promote an area here in the sun. So, myself, my name is Eric Charles Hawkinson. Please call me Eric.、Uh, my working background is mostly in IT. I worked for a Microsoft outsourcer for a couple years. I do also have a couple of years in the travel industry as well. I worked at the Phoenix International Airport under America West Airlines for a couple of years. But about 10 years ago, I moved to Japan and I became a teacher, and the IT and the teaching sort of melded together, and that's when I started going towards educational technology. And、uh, those three main areas inside of educational technology that I've been looking at is mobile learning,、uh, using mobile devices for、uh, learning, any type of, usually it's、uh, language learning,、uh, games based learning, using games of any type to.、Uh, Study and learn, and、uh, informal learning environments, which is closely, closest related to the tourism、uh, to, that I'm going to be talking about today. So, the area of research that I've been published in that I've been doing lately is this, and it's the closest related to tourism that I can think of of all the research that I've done. Has anyone heard of this? Some more she, okay.、Uh, just regular WAM without the E, it stands for word of mouth. In Japanese, that was the kuchikomi. So basically, rumors spread from person to person.、Uh, and this is something that people in the tourism see is very important to. You just add the E in front of that, and that becomes information spread from person to person, usually by informal means a tweet, an email,、uh, could be just uh, uh, videos back and forth on YouTube. And it's very informal. So it's how information gets spread from people to people, like a rumor, and it's a study of that on the internet. And just to illustrate what that is,、uh, I live in a small town in Fukuyama in Japan, and this is one of my favorite ramen stands there. And you, you scroll across there, and there's a lot of people waiting to get inside. And just by looking, you can tell, oh, it looks delicious. It looks like there's a lot of. Things that could be happening inside. So, this place is popular, at least initially, because it had a lot of word of mouth, traditional word of mouth. 
And you, you look, at from, look at it from the outside, and it's like, oh, that must be good. So that's a traditional type of word of mouth. But these days, it looks a little bit more something like this. You add the e wam, and you go to e-wam. And this is something called tabelog. It's the, uh, probably one of the top five uh, kuchikomi sites for restaurants in Japan. And this is the same restaurant, Tonkichi, uh, probably too much ramen. <laughs> But uh, it has, you can tell how many people are went, how many people are interested in going, 114 people, itimitai. And so this is almost the same thing happening. This is WAM and then IWAM. So, but the good thing about the IWAM is it's all happening on the internet, so we can collect data from various points. It could be uh, using websites, web analytics, uh, the web purchases data and things like that. So we, this is much better, much easier uh, analyzed than traditional forms of uh, word of mouth. And it looks, the initial research model that I did, I wrote a paper in 2012 about this, and it's the most simplest version I want to talk about today, just to set things up, is that you'll have your travelers on one side, and they're going to the internet to find information about uh, your attraction, or your restaurant, or your city. And then you have promoters on the other side putting out information about their personal things that people, they would like to visit, or the things they'd like to sell. And then all gets rummaged around in the internet through various media. It could be websites, it could be apps, it could be videos, it could be a couple of different things, and it gets rummaged around, and sometimes what the promoter puts in is not what the traveler sees in the end. And so a little bit uh, evolved version of that, this is still a simplified version, there's at the end of the speech I'll tell you where you can find more information about this on my website. But uh, as it, information gets put into the internet, it sort of gets rummaged around and changed. So as Travelers see that information. It's not exactly as the promoter put it in. And we're learning that that's very important because travelers will trust fellow travelers' comments about the food at your restaurant or the service at your hotel above what they might read from the actual company or hotel or restaurant that they place on their websites. So the Second-hand information, or the user-generated data, is becoming more and more important, and we need a way to generate more of it. You encourage your customers, encourage the visitors of the city to generate more information that goes from traveler, current traveler, to future traveler, rather than the promoter to the traveler, because it's more, more well-trusted, especially because if that traveler is maybe a family member or a friend, it's gonna be even more well-trusted and uh, more well received. So this is a project I started in 2011 to uh, sandbox a lot of the projects that I've been working on in uh, tourism and uh, information studies, basically. It's called Forever Kyoto. Uh, where I live in Fukuchiyama, Japan, is in the deep countryside. And when I first moved there, there wasn't a lot of information in English especially about the uh, beautiful hikes and things in the countryside. So I just started blogging and uh, putting out information on various social media sites. But now I use it to analyze the information coming in and out of the websites to help understand best practices and usage on how to uh, generate more uh, data from the current traveler to the future traveler. And one of those ways is called augmented reality, which I'm going to be talking about today. And one person, you used augmented reality here, but just to quickly explain augmented reality and the most, probably the most common usage today, this is a city, in, a street in Kyoto called uh, Shijo Kawaramachi. It's usually very busy. This is like four in the morning, so there's nobody here. So you go up and you don't know where to go and there's no one here to ask you or give directions. So you'll pop open a augmented reality app and you'll turn it on. And now that app is taking information in from the camera and also taking information from uh, different websites, perhaps your social media apps and things like that. 
And let's say you're looking for money. So now it's going to recognize that there's different places on the block where you are physically, like your GPS data. And it's going to overlay that on top of the information coming in from the camera. So you'll know that now is Kilta Bank. You can go get money there. Down the street, there's an ATM. And even us, thank you, even a uh, smarter way to do that is to plug it into your social media. And now you know where your friends have been. Oh, your friend has gone to that restaurant. He says it's good. And uh, down there, they had poor service. Don't go there. And you're just looking through your phone, and you're discovering the world in this new way. This is the oldest form that I can think of of augmented reality that's been used for 40 years inside airplanes. It's just being put up in front. This is the cockpit. So this is just another way of, that's been used augmented reality before. But it's getting smaller and smaller, and we're able to use it now in our phones. This is what Wikipedia has to say about augmented reality. Maybe you may have heard of virtual reality. It's a bit different than augmented reality. Virtual reality is a completely simulated environment. Augmented reality has to use something from the physical world around you. Could be an object, could be just where you are in the world. And there's many different types of them. And uh, I don't really have time to go through all of them right now. I'm going to have to rush through this. But uh, there's camera tracking, non-camera tracking combined. So just, I'll try and show you one example. This started about 10 years ago. This is the succession to the QR code. You put your camera up to it, and these 3D objects appear. This really wasn't used for tourism, but more for engineering and drafting and things like that. But for tourism, I've uh, found four different types of augmented reality that are very useful. One is for navigation, GPS gaming, uh, translating, and for triggering images, billboards, and textbooks, and uh, other printed material. And one is navigation, like I said before. This is a picture from my office. I put it up, and this is pulling information from Wikipedia. It could pull information from uh, before there was a tra uh, travel advisor, trip advisor, and things like that. So from my office, 850 uh, meters in what that direction is the city hall of Fukushima. About a kilometer straight ahead is the castle. And that's one, one thing that you need to appear on these is you, ha you have to make sure that your business is being visible on these various websites like Wikipedia and TripAdvisor. If it's not, then these won't show up on here. And Japan, especially in my area, is still not doing a good job of putting their businesses where this can be visible. And this is something that uh, is not so popular in Japan, but it's very popular around the world. It's getting more and more popular. It's called uh, geocaching. Has anyone heard of geocaching? Thank you. <laughs> One person. So geocaching is like a game. And they put these little plastic bins around everywhere. And before, you just had your GPS data, and you use it, and you find where that GPS location is. And you take one item out, and you put a new item in. But now we have all these great apps right inside your phone. Where you, these kinds of games are happening all the time. And now they're turning into big uh, group-related quests with a lot of side missions and things like that. So if you can incorporate that into your uh, overall tourism plan, this could be great for gamers. And OCR is melding with augmented reality, and now you can translate signs and things like that right off. There's a lot of complicated algorithms going on here, but you just point your phone at a sign, it can translate for you. That's a uh, new technology coming out. It's still not available in the Asian languages, but you can uh, translate a lot of the European languages doing this. And this is one of my projects. This is probably the most prominent in the print industry. This is a textbook I designed for my classes. So this is a page of me speaking uh, something with uh, on a dialogue here. You point your phone at it, and it populates it with buttons. And now you can press and hear the dialogue, see a video, go through the uh, vocabulary. But this is already being used in tourism, too. You go up to uh, a train station. There's a poster. Thank you. And uh, you put your phone up to it, and a video will play about the area. And one, for tomorrow, you'll, some of you are going on the trip to, around to view different places. And one of the places you will visit is the Gamcheon Culture Village. 
And I researched online, they do a stamp rally. They give you a sheet of paper and you go around and you stamp things. But using augmented reality, this could be developed into something very powerful, I think. So you can do a check-in rally where you go into different places and you use an application like Foursquare and check in. You check into all of them, you get a special stamp, and that, means, that gets put onto Facebook and whatever and goes spread throughout. Or you can do a scavenger hunt where you get a special quest and you have to find something, you get hints here and there, and that becomes like a game in the area. And you can do a team-based quest with an application. These are all application names, by the way. Uh, to make sort of a game out of the whole experience. I know that was very quick. I'm sorry. I was kind of speaking very fast. Sorry about that again. But if you want more information, my website and the stuff I'm doing about augmented reality is there. My email, my Twitter, my Facebook. Please be my friend on Facebook. And uh, thanks very much for listening. Professor Hawkins. Hawkinson. Hawkinson. Thank you so much for your excellent you know, presentation and interesting research topic. Uh, I think the, the topic of information the learning environment is very important because recently so many people have been using the smartphone and mm -hmm. the travel, so it's very important. But in my opinion, the more important question is actually, I have my read, read, read you know, this article for the okay. <laughs> presentation here in this session. Uh, but, but I think, in my opinion, a more important question is how much degree the tourists use, uh, accept, and actually use the mobile mm -hmm. applications such as navigation, GPS, something like that. For instance, for me, to me, you know, uh, I'm a tourism major and I'm a professor at the Department of Tourism. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I'm very young still, you know. <laughs> and uh, also, I have been using the smartphone for over you know, five years. Okay. But whenever I take a travel, I have never used such kind of mobile. Really? Phone. Yeah, no, never. You but know, you so use it in your daily life, but not. Uh, in daily life, yeah. So, for instance, if I need some information about the travel team, I can call travel agency, or if I need uh, some ATM or bank, I can ask him or something. Because Think about it. You know, I'm, I'm going to take a trip in Tokyo, and I'm here in Tokyo. And my interest is, you know, the sightseeing here, enjoy some you know, environment here. So, and the using the navigation looks like this, maybe sometimes the borrowing a little bit. And so, my question is, you need to have you ever heard about the technology model? Of Davis, course. Uh, yeah, Davis in 1994. Right? Yes, and so uh, this suggests the two important sort of the sub dimensions of the technology model, which is mm -hmm. time, which is perceived ease of use. Yes. Perceived, you know, mm -hmm. uncertainty, right? So, my question is, you know, yeah, actually, you know, how much tourists use such kind of navigation and GPS when they take a travel? So, the uh, so more important question is the reason why I'm talking about this story is you need to conduct some, you know, so empirical data. Mm -hmm. This is not, yeah, this is like, I do my. Correct, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's a very important point. Uh, yes, uh, this research is very good and the uh, work is very nice, and uh, which is, you know, and you derive a conclusion based on the literature review. Is a theoretical background, right? Basically, but if you have, a, you should have the conduct an interview or you know with some tourists who have used you know such a mobile application mm -hmm. or potential tourists, mm -hmm. or you can you know conduct you know some verified studies with them. You should you can drive more you know better conclusion. I think you know, this is very good research, but you know I can you can mm -hmm. I think you can improve the it's your paper based on such kind of background observation. There's a very, lots of interesting things that you mentioned, and thank you for those comments. Uh, you mentioned the, the acceptance of modern technology. Yeah, and, yeah. Tim, that's one of them. And another one is a cultural bias in uh, technology acceptance. And uh, in that research, it showed a big difference between Western and Eastern cultures right. in accepting new technology. And I don't know how that might relate to tourism, but I can tell you from tourism, tourists coming, I don't have any data to show you right now about that, tourists coming to Japan, especially from Western countries, mm -hmm. these are very highly used. Do they use a system? Well, they, they might not be using the augmented reality. This is a new, a relatively new thing, but they're using navigation in their phones, and especially backpackers and that type of traveler, they're traveling without an itinerary, and they're, they're not planning ahead so much, so they're using their phone just to find the nearest hotel, the nearest restaurant. Well, so right now, what's around me now? And you, don't, you can't call your 
travel agent and ask, oh, I'm, I'm, I don't know where I am, so please tell me. So that's where these technologies are best used. But you're right, if you're planning ahead and you can just call and get a whole thing arranged, that's, uh, I think that uh, shows a little bit more about uh, the acceptance of ambiguity that uh, Eastern cultures and Western cultures culturally have a little bit difference. But that's a good point. I, I... <laughs> oh. Those are all great comments. Thanks for all those. Uh, you mentioned a couple of the different things. One was it, it, the sustainability in the future. Uh, that was one you mentioned. And there's a lot of argument and talk right now about augmented reality becoming the eighth mass medium. So at first we had print and books, and then we went to radio, TV, internet, mobile phones. People are saying, it's not decided yet, but it's jury still out, that augmented reality might be the next mass medium. Because now it's not only being in our phones, it's going to be in the glasses, our watches, wherever we look, our reality is going to be augmented in some ways. There may be even like a contact lens or something like that in the future. So this I think this technology is probably going to be with us, especially in tourism, for many years to come. And it's only going to get more integrated. You had uh, concerns about privacy, and so do I. I use a lot of this technology in the classroom. And that's very difficult for me to be able to use it many times because I'm concerned about the student's privacy. So I understand that very much as well. And I don't really have any clear answers about privacy. And the last thing you had, what was the last point? Oh. <clears throat> yes, that's the most important part. It's a lot, there's a lot of pushback lately about using our phones too much. You look in uh, at the train station and there's all these people to talk to and everyone's looking at their phone. And even in, in America, we have something called look up day now, where you have to put away your phone and just look up. It's really a gray area when it comes to these technologies, because I, I've seen uh, uses of this that actually helps bring people together. The augmented reality, you, you learn a little bit about the local people, and it tells you where to find a particular person, and you go and find them, and you can talk. 
but you're only going to find one person. You don't really ask somebody for directions or try to do some language exchange and things like that. So there's good things and then there's bad things. Ultimately, is it going to be good or bad? I, I really don't know. Thank you. Mm. Uh, local people are making iPhone updates to speak to the memories of the disaster. Mm -hmm. So I would like to discuss uh, about this studio uh, later. Okay, yeah, great. <laughs> All right, I know we're late, so I'm sorry to keep you up. So thanks very much for listening and uh, enjoy the rest of your time.